Hello. This is going to be a brief video that compares the differences between like your custom Revit family or default families with the direct shape element in Revit. A lot of people aren't very familiar with the direct shape because it's not a UI created element. The Autodesk definition is that part of the definition is that the direct shape is primarily intended for importing shapes from other data formats, such as IFC or STEM, where not enough information is available to create a real Revit element. So the primary differences between a real Revit element and a direct shape is gonna be in the materials, the geometry, parameters, and eventually the usage overall. At this point, if you just wanna skip the video, you can go to our guide where there's direct shapes and where we kind of made this matrix that's going to give you um, a clear understanding. It's, if I wanted to assign a subcategory, it's going to be, have to be a component family or, or a nested family. So I'll go through each one of these. I'm not going to be able to cover all the, vari the variations, but I'll do a quick comparison uh, to give an, help give an understanding of what the possibilities are in your project. So starting with materials, pretty much it's going to be uh, painted or parameter driven or subcategories. For an example, we have our structural columns. Some of these are direct shape, direct shape type, family from template, and then uh, we get the default family. The You should be really familiar already with how the, like making custom family, adding in your, adding in your control of your materials um, through the parameter, or your object styles, right? That's the subcategory where you can apply different materials to different elements in your family and have control of them either by type or by instance. When creating direct shapes, all the materials applied are going to be painted. So a good illustration of the painted material is like this Revit wall that I made here. So this is a direct shape wall. This is a normal wall. If I use the paint and cover over here, you could see in the dialog right here that it's gonna be different that it's saying it's the face has a material. Where we go here, we could see that it's saying there's a painted brick material. One of the things that is different is going to be like the alignment. So if I want to align this brick with the top of the wall, I can just get the pattern right here. If I try to align this pattern, it's not even giving me the selection of the pattern because the pattern is fixed uh, for the geometry and the UV when it was created. We can, we can make adjustments. Uh, by just painting over to make it look like the other one. But that said, going back to the calm example, if we go to an elevation, an elevation, if we go to an elevation, you can see that there's there's continuity between these these materials even when they are they are they are different uh, Revit elements and then when scheduled you can see that they all show up in the schedule so Going on to the next one, talk a bit about geometry. 
one of the one of the key things on the geometry is going to be the placement where back to this example where having my 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 rhino geometry here for our structural column is going to give give a good illustration of of how we place things so our plain old direct shape is going to always be related to the world space so wherever it is on zero comma zero it's going to show up in a zero comma zero relationship with revit its internal origin so right now we're referencing that layer I have the geometry that's where it is in space if I wanted more copy these over and just going to add them wherever they are in space once in here you could copy and rotate them and do other things but that's going to lose its creation relationship here also there isn't like a floor parameter so if you were doing multiple floors you'd have to know where you're placing your geometry The direct shape type functions more like a Revit family, which is going to be, so if we add component location, you can see it except a point or a plane. And that's, that's the same thing with the add geometry direct shape type. So the direct shape type, just like a Revit family, is created at zero comma zero and then placed at a plane we can have a rotation to illustrate that i've added these points i can add my, my columns in by location and now we have our direct shape types in the project this is going to be a little different on like a had structural column system family, fault family, where they're asking for a curve. Kind of the same same thing when you're adding a wall, you got to you got to add it by a curve or by a profile. So I've created a series of vertical curves to create my column. So three essential different ways of placing elements either by their their location absolute location by point or plane and then by whatever Revit API requires the complexity of the geometry that's kind of that's talking about well if you're going to have nested nested families you're going to be going with the custom Revit family. Uh, if you have a doubly curved surface, say like a, a curtain wall panel, um, that kind of complexity might be better put into a direct shape and just fed in there with a with some uh, parameters. Any parameter-driven geometry is going to have to be a Revit family, custom Revit family. Having the different um, different families is going to allow you to have different functionality in the Revit UI as well. So even there, though they're in the same category, I wouldn't be able to go here and use the steel tool, tool to put in bolts in between this connection. Whereas if I'm using a, a system family, I could go in here and add the bolts. So, and that's going to vary between the type of a default family, system family that you're using, of what's available in the Revit um, UI. But once again, even though these are are, are different objects they are going to behave 
somewhat similar. So I can tag all these by category. And they're all gonna all gonna function as a cohesive element. Or and you'll see that similar to the material that the structural columns, even though they're different elements, are all coming into the same schedule. Managing the parameters to get it to the exact defaults. Um, it's going to kind of depend on your project and what the requirements are. The default parameters on a on a default family are going to be slightly different than your custom family than your types. But adding in your parameters to your category is going to allow you to uh, make your schedules align. So looking at all the variables, there's going to be pretty much few ways that are optimal for using direct shapes. I'd say in a schematic situation where you're you're not ready to build a family or in a high detail situation, which is like for a fabrication where you have numerous holes, numerous cuts, things like that in your in whatever you're making that necessarily don't need to be shown in Revit that you're only using for documentation and coordination and having one-offs. So if you're just doing something that you don't want to spend a couple hours making a fancy family, and you want it just to show up in the right category, have a material, that's great usage as well. So to recap, check out the guide for the latest. This is going to be changing as we work through and and they're going to be adding in more functionality to the direct shapes. I saw that in the Revit, um, future Revit versions are going to ha actually have parameter driven materials in your direct shapes. I don't know if that's going to be 2025, 2026. Uh, do always kind of keep an eye on the uh, release notes because we're adding stuff in weekly. And if you have any questions, uh, Feel free to reach out to me on the forum.